Hello, sex? Yes, sex. We don't want to talk about it. The church doesn't want to talk about it. But the truth is, we all think about it. As a matter of fact, we all indulge in it. Some of us, it's pleasurable. Sex is enjoyable. And to some of us, sex, what a mystery. Tonight, we're looking at sex in marriage. Watch this, and I'll be right back. My name is Prophet Samson Uluamodede, the general officer of Prayer Center Church of God Worldwide. I'm hereby invite you to a three-day special program that will come up on 38th of May till on 1st of June. 72 hours with God. And the theme of the program is Battle to Finish. And on the 3rd of June, our second anniversary will come up. Please, for your information, I am available in the church promises every day from 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. And our order of service every Wednesday, another service starts from 7 p.m. till 9 a.m. Every Friday, powerful night fish. And our Sunday service starts from 10 a.m. till 1 o'clock. That Lord is waiting for you. Come and be blessed. Thank you. Hello, my name is Oye. If I were to ask you, what do you want out of life? I know most of us will say we want money, we want a good job, we want a good family, we want good friends. But the underlying thing is we all want to have a good life. I have looked through the Bible and through people's experiences and I have written a book about what I've learned on how to have a good life. It's entitled Securing Tomorrow Today How to Have a Good Life. What happens to us in life is as a result of what we do every day of our life. In this book, you will learn the things you need to do to have a good life. You can have a good life. You are supposed to have a good life. Get your copy of the book today. God bless you. Thank you. Welcome back. To ride with us tonight on sex and marriage is this man of God I so much respect. Pastor G. Day, David Modede, all the way from Northampton. Good evening, Pastor. Good evening. It's, it's nice having you again on Questions in the Hair. It's such a great honor to be back. How was your trip? Oh, it was fantastic. You want to introduce yourself and welcome those people. Viewers, my name is J.D. Modede, and uh, I'm from Northampton. I pastor uh, Liberty House uh, uh, in Northampton, and uh, it's such a great pleasure to, to serve you once again. You're welcome on the show tonight. Uh, you had this powerful couple seminar over the weekend yes. you want to give us a gist of how that was that was fantastic we we took um, couples away for a kingdom marriage retreat wow. and uh, that was a place for um, training empowerment and relaxation and rekindling uh, uh, romance back into our into our marriages Whoa. not only that we had a, an opportunity to renew our vows Wow. And uh, it was like you got married to your spouse all over again. again. And uh, I can tell you, it was such a powerful experience. It was such a wonderful time. And, you know, uh, the couples were ready, really, to live a new life with their, with their spouses again. Wow. You Did know, you, by any chance, talk about sex? We talked about everything. Wow. You know, and already, you know, people are saying, one, we want it back again next year. Two, we wow. want longer days. Wow. <laughs> I can't wait to be part of next year's event, by the grace of God. You've got a program coming up in June. Yes. Before we go on our topic tonight, sex and marriage, you want to tell us a bit about this program? Okay. Now, we have in our 10th uh, annual Kingdom Convention, okay. uh, which is going to be from the 7th of June to the 10th of June. And the theme is the City of Liberty. Wow. And we have uh, the convention highlight itself, which is... Uh, a, a three-day school okay. on the subject of law. Now, the chaos in our world today and all the uh, suppression, oppression, and tension and all the uh, uh, economic crisis and all the things that we're seeing, you know, redefining of marriage and all those crazy things that mm -hmm. is on the news today. 
I can tell you is a violation of law. Wow. God has set laws in place Emotion. that is supposed to give order to our society and to our world. And whenever you see disorder, it's an evidence of a law that's been violated. Mm -hmm. Everything functions within the remit of law. Mm -hmm. uh, as we are seated there right now, we are on the law. Yeah. It's called the law of gravity. Mm -hmm. If we should break the law of gravity, we'll be lifted up mm -hmm. straight away. So now people do not understand the value of law, the power of law, you know, and uh, the source of law itself. Mm -hmm. Creation law, ritual laws, you know. Mm -hmm. People talk about grace, but they don't know the place of law itself. Jesus wow. said, I came as a fulfillment of law. That's right. Everything works on the law. Where there is no law, there is disorder. That's why we want to invite everyone to be part of this wonderful time of intensive school. My team will be there as well. Fantastic. <laughs> so it's going to be from the 7th Thursday to Saturday, which is the 9th of June. Mm. And we have Dr. Jerry Honor, who is um, a New Testament editor of the Spiritfield Life Bible, an expert professor. Uh, and a Greek scholar uh, wow. uh, on the New Testament uh, teaching mm -hmm. uh, for over 50 years. He, he is going to be with us teaching uh, alongside myself mm -hmm. and my father, my spiritual father, mm -hmm. is Apostle Matthew Oluwajiba. We'll well. So we have three days of day session and three nights of prophetic night, revival night, and an all worship night. Wow. So we have a row of great artists coming wow. uh, uh, from different parts of the world as wow. well. Wow. So, and on Sunday is the, is the feature. It's a Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. banquet. Okay. We have a Thanksgiving service and a banquet wow. at the Parking Hotel. Right town. So, uh, if you check our website, www.cumi.northampton.org, www.cumi.northampton.org, you get more information. There. Whoa, 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 whoa. So. Information, they say, is power. Make yes. your way to Liberty House in the heart of Northampton on the 7th to the 10th of June, and your life will never remain the same. Sex. Sex. Is it an holy heart? Sex, isn't it? <laughs> Right, okay. Now, do you really want the truth tonight? Oh, yeah. Bring okay. it on, Pastor. Bring right. it on. We now, want nothing but the truth here tonight. Right. Now, sex. Now, first thing, I said, for you to be successful in anything in life, you need to be knowledgeable about it. That's right. The Bible says, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, that my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, we got to know that... Anything that you do not understand the purpose of as well, abuse is what sex is. Yeah. Now, sex, what is it? Where is it from? Mm -hmm. God is the one that created sex. That, therefore, to get any knowledge about sex, the place you go back to is the manufacturer of it. Mm -hmm. It was not the intent or the plan of man. It was not invented by, you know, by, by, by medical science or any of those places. So you mm -hmm. cannot get the truth of this uh, from them. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the truth? The truth is the original information. So if you want the original information about sex or anything at all, mm -hmm. you must go back to God. Go back to the roots. That is why if you look in the book of Genesis, the Bible actually introduces the word sex to us there mm -hmm. between Adam and Eve. And the Bible says, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother. Okay? Genesis chapter 2. Um, and she shall be an Verse 24, rather. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one, one flesh. flesh. It didn't say one spirit. You're one spirit with God, mm -hmm. but you become one flesh with your spouse. Okay. That is why sex is a physical, uh, uh, intimate physical re relationship mm -hmm. that actually involves the sexual organ. That is why you're only matrimony, only mating. That is where it comes. That's where a man and a woman comes, becomes one. Okay. A man and a woman becomes one and they cut covenant in the place of sex. Mm -hmm. Sex is what seals the marriage uh, covenant. Mm -hmm. Sex is what consummates, the way you consummate the marriage itself. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about, you know, do not be uh, unequally yoked. You know, mm -hmm. don't be joined with mm -hmm. sex is a place that you and your spouse become one. And that is why it's so vital, but it's vital to be placed in the, pla in the context in the right of the place, place God wants it to work. Okay. Sex is meant for marriage. Okay. Sex is meant for married people. But marriage is not for sex. Oh, here we go. Sex is meant for marriage. Mm -hmm. Sex is an expression of your love towards to your spouse. Another, yeah. But sex is not love. Sex does not equal love. love. 
if it if it was, I, I believe the whole world would be in love. Oh, bring it on, Pastor. Yeah. Now there's a lot Sex of Sex <laughs> does not equal love. Good one tonight. Now, and a lot of people have sex, but it's gonna have to do with love. love. Uh -huh. So sex does not mean love. Now the purpose of marriage is not for sex. However, sex is meant to be inside of marriage. So the mm. purpose of marriage is different. However, in marriage, that is where sex has been placed into. Mm. So people need to have a good understanding because what you do not understand, you cannot appropriately apply. And that is why there's a lot of chaos because there's a lot of violation of the laws, of the principles that guide sex and marriage and all the things that God has ordained. Whoa. And that is why I believe this is a very important topic that, that the church should be looking at. Now, this is one of the things that the church never talked about and has they become a crisis in our world. We are supposed to be the solution providers for such detailed uh, topics. And yeah, we're not talking about, topic. you're not talking about, well, we're talking about sex and marriage tonight. And for you single ladies out there, let me just chip this in quickly. Pastor Mother said, sex does not equal love. It doesn't, it doesn't equal love at all. Don't let this guy come saying, prove your love to me. Let me sleep with you oh before, before marriage. Oh he doesn't love you because sex does not equal love. Yes, yes. So that's your take home tonight. You single guys out there, don't go saying, oh, he said if I don't do it, that means I don't love him. That means I can't prove my love to him. In fact, if anybody says they love you, the evidence is that they will not make you violate the ordinance of God. Hmm. Anyone trying to get you to violate the ordinance or the laws of God or the word of God, doesn't really love you. Doesn't love you at all. Mm. A lot of things people call love is not love. It's just a feeling. It's a lust. That's mm. only until they get under your pants. That's where it ends. Mm. But sex uh, needs to be uh, under the power of a will. It should be a decision, a decision that is made in the context people. of marriage. Okay. The Lord bless you, sir. Yeah. So how important is sex to marriage? Sex must be within marriage. Shouldn't be yes. outside marriage. Yeah. Uh, anybody who, who, who loves you wouldn't want you to violate okay. the, ru the rule of God. Sex yes. does not equal love. That's right. Okay, it must be within marriage. How important is sex to marriage then? Now, number one, sex is very important to marriage. Uh, I said sometimes ago when I was in the program. Well, you I said, said uh, marriage is not necessarily. That's true. It's not because of yes. sex, you know. So you don't build it on that. Some people think, oh, marriage is all about sex. I've got news for you. You can get into the place and your sex drive runs out when you face all the other issues of life in marriage. Mm -hmm. So it's not all about sex mm -hmm. because sometimes people think, oh, this is going to just be about sex. No. So are you saying sex is not relevant, it's not important? Sex is very rele relevant, it's very important, but you need to understand it so that you can appropriately use it okay. in, the, in the right context in marriage. Okay, so I put Now, there. number one, one of the needs of a male man is sex mm -hmm. because your design actually determines your need. So the way a man is designed is designed as a giver. Okay. The woman is designed as a as receiver. A receiver yeah. Now, the man is a progenitor. So the man is engineered for sex all the days of his life. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have cycles. Mm -hmm. The man doesn't stop having sex. Mm -hmm. If he needs to, at 90, he will have it mm -hmm. without anything stopping. Mm -hmm. While a woman doesn't necessarily need sex, a woman enjoys sex in the confines and the environment of affection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is why if you don't give a woman affection, you don't give a woman care. Then she doesn't need sex from you. She will probably not enjoy sex and you will only mm. be treating her as a prostitute. Mm. Okay, now let me explain this to you because sometimes people don't really understand how you're, you're actually designed. Your car is designed to function on petrol mm -hmm. because of the combustion engine that it works mm -hmm. in. A man has an hormone system called testro mm -hmm. test testosterone yeah I think that's what it's called mm -hmm. and the woman has the hormone called estrogen mm -hmm. now testro testosterone mm -hmm. is something that makes a man aggressive and sexually um, uh, uh, geared by reason of the things that he sees mm -hmm. so a man you know when he sees a, a good little woman begins to feel something and his hormone begins to run through it mm, it's natural it's natural to it because of his design while the estrogen hormone in a woman actually makes her uh, yearn for things like affection, nice words, you know, um, mm. care, you know, people that care about her, mm. then our moons, she's always l looking for attention. 
Mm. That's the way the hormones actually uh, oh. work in both uh, species. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have an imbalance of hormones, then that is where you begin to find a dysfunction between the male man and the female. And the female. Mm. And this is what people need to understand that look, sometimes we, we look at people that don't operate properly in the confines of this law. Mm -hmm. Or they, uh, people say things like, you know, they are homosexuals and things like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll give you a good example. Everyone is born a sinner. Okay. Now that is no, no, nobody's fault. Yeah. That's, that was Adam's fault. Yeah, yeah. Now, it is now your choice to remain a, a sinner, sinner or move to the other side. Or get born again. Mm -hmm. The same way if anybody has a dysfunctional hormone or imbalance hormone, it will be your choice because you can actually get help. And that is why you must be born again. It's natural that they feel the way they feel. So some people might, might have a dysfunction or imbalance of hormones. Thank you. Now, now, promoting it to be a lifestyle is a totally different thing. Yeah. You know, it's like promoting sin to be a lifestyle. Mm. Even though it wasn't your fault. Mm -hmm. But it's now your choice now to so either get born again mm -hmm. so you can have the correct life that God intended from the oh, beginning. Okay. Am I making sense? Yeah, you're making sense. So you need to understand where this imbalance is and how this mm. thing works. For my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Okay. That okay. is all. So we need to get knowledge about how the male man and the female man are designed and how they're supposed to function. Mm. So in marriage, sex is required. One, because it's one of the needs of a man. Two, sex is a place of covenant. Mm. The Bible says you shall become one flesh. Mm. It's like, you know, you, you cut a covenant. You know, when you cut a covenant, it's sealed with blood. Yeah. In, the, in, the, in sex, that is where you seal you. It's like you, you mm. keep on uh, sealing your covenant with that blood all the time. So mm. he enhances your covenant and makes you intimate mm. within the confines of marriage. Mm. So therefore, you can say, I'm married to somebody and you don't want to be one flesh with them. Mm. It's not a place for you to, to win victories and win you know, the championship table mm. because some people think sex is about a macho thing. Mm. Sex is about expressing your love. love. It's about intimacy. Mm. It's about you know, renew that covenant mm. on a consistent basis. Mm. If you read what Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, mm. he said, make sure that you don't keep away from each other mm. except for a time for mm. prayer and fasting. fasting. Then come back together and don't deny each other. Okay. Don't deny each other's body because your bodies belong to yourself. Okay. So sex is very important in marriage. Very, very important. That is why a lot of people sometimes, they don't really tell you their frustration in marriage. They mm. only show the symptoms of their frustration. Mm. But the real issue it's could sex. be mm -hmm. could because be they're being denied. You're right. Or you're their right. needs are not being met. Mm. Mm. So many homes, so many marriages are suffering because sex, their sex life it's is, is, dry. is dry, is not, is not the way it should be, it's boring. And uh, exactly. tonight we just want to hope that the Lord will heal uh, marriages that are suffering from a good sex life. Mm. And give us grace to, you know, move on with life. Okay, what, what, what will you say about foreplay? I'm a woman. I know there are thousands of women out there who wouldn't really enjoy sex because their partner just want to get in and get out. We'll be we'll talking to adults tonight. So yes. I'm married. Permit me to talk. You know, they, they, they're not really identifying with it. They, they're not enjoying it because their partner just want to be in and out. But I know there is something called Foreplay. You want to tell us about foreplay tonight and how relevant, how important is okay. foreplay before sex so that our men out there don't just grab and in and out and the woman is lying there suffering. You now, want to tell us a bit about that tonight, sir? Now, the Bible doesn't say, uh, you need to understand something about God, that the word of God is true. Mm -hmm. The word of God is the original information. Yeah. And I can only teach basis, based on the word, on of, the God. word of God. Go on, There's please. nothing in the Bible that talks about foreplay. Mm -hmm. But what the Bible talks about is affection towards each other. Okay. And I think uh, in marriage, the, one of the key needs, especially for a woman, is affection. Mm -hmm. A woman that you, know, you talk to, you communicate with, mm -hmm. you touch. You, some people only touch their wives only when it's time for sex. That's what I'm saying. Yes. And that is not, that is not ideal. Mm -hmm. So now you can turn that into foreplay. Yeah, that's, you well. You can call it a yeah, different yeah, word. Yeah. But the, the Bible calls affection. Mm -hmm. You know, being uh, affecting someone that she's actually looking forward to having you mm -hmm. as her husband. Mm -hmm. Because you care for her needs. Mm -hmm. uh, because you say nice things to her that make our hormones run and mm -hmm. things like that. You know, uh, you, you, don't, you don't just want to have a sex with a woman that you, you can't even hold her in the midst of your friends. Mm. 
that is abuse. Mm. So, so really, foreplay is not just on the bed. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if you want to talk about foreplay uh, in the terms of scripture, yeah. foreplay is all the time, affection all the mm -hmm, time. You're mm -hmm. affecting her. You say nice word. You write her a note. You send her a card. You mm -hmm. call her. You know, hey baby, how are you mm -hmm. doing? How are you, what's happening? How are the mm -hmm. children? Things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just you jump on the bed, close the, you know, switch off the light, bam, mm -hmm. bam, bam, and you're your heart. That is. That's what you do with prostitutes. Whoa, that is what you do with <laughs> prostitutes. You just want to get in, light up, in, out, and that's it. But with your loved wife, affection is needed. What are the attributes of this affection? Oh, dear. Sex wise, how do you show affection to a woman before sex? You well, I understand the concept of it having to be a day, I mean, yes. an every time thing, not, not yes. only when you want to have sex. Yes. So, but in the context of sex in, in marriage woman, tonight, how do you show women affection before, before sex, a actually? A woman likes to be touched. A woman likes to be touched. Now, sometimes people want sex, but they don't want to touch the woman. <laughs> That's now, horrible. a lot of people do that. <laughs> that is why in some, sometimes some people only have sex in the dark. Oh, my God. And the Bible says both of them, they were naked and they were, and not, they were ashamed not ashamed of themselves. Mm. That's not, that's not sex in the right context of the word of God. Mm. So a woman wants to be touched. You, you, your wife is the one that you can kiss. Mm. You, know? you admire her. Uh, you admire her body. She admires your body. Mm. You know? mm. Those are the kind of things that I believe uh, scripturally is permitted within sex and marriage. Okay. You know? There are some crazy things that other people do as foreplay. Mm. Maybe they tie themselves together. I've had some people ask me those kind of questions in church. <laughs> tie themselves and, together. And, and I'm wondering why how could any spirit-filled person could ask those questions? Whoa. You know, so, <clears throat> so what we call foreplay, uh, we need to be careful that it's, it's, it's within the moral context of the Word of God. Mm. So what, what, what will you reckon that moral context is? Moral context, you can kiss your wife, you can hold your wife, you can hug, you know, you can you know, do stuff with yourself, but nothing that violates uh, our mm. being human or by our... Uh, 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 a humanity, dignity as a, dignity a woman. In a way. Yes, that's what, that's mm, what I'm looking for. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, if I may ask you tonight, um, well, should sex be carried out as a routine in marriage? Okay. Or should what? it be seen as you know time to share love and affection? <laughs> some people just want to do it because, mm, in fact, you you hear some men saying, um, "Come here and perform your marital duties, please." No. You that know, is, should it be seen as an that, obligation, that, as a routine? That, that, that is, that's not what sex is meant for. Sex should be a place where you express your love, your care to your wife. Sex, let me, let me just read the scripture to mm. you. The Bible says here, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, mm. and uh, I'm talking about, uh, from verse 3. Mm. The Bible says, let the husband render to his wife. The affection due to her, likewise also the wife to the husband. Mm. Wife, you don't have authority over your body, but the husband does. And likewise, the, the, the wife the as wife well. Too. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you. Mm. Now it says, uh, so that says some of, the, uh, of your lack of control. But I say this as a condition, not as a commandment. But I wish that all men were like me. Uh, but he said we should exercise self-control. Mm. Uh, now, what Apostle Paul is saying there is that, look, we need to make sure that this is a consistent thing with understanding. Okay. Now, you need to enjoy it. Now, it's not enjoyment from one side. Both of good. you good. must actually partake of it. Okay. That means you must understand the needs of each other. Mm -hmm. You must under the understand the times that it's not the time for sex. You already okay. understand your spouse and you don't call for sex at the wrong time. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. We're going to short break. Yeah. Tonight we're still dealing with this topic, sex and marriage with, with Pastor G. Day, David, Mother Day. We're going to short break and when we come back, you'll be able to ask your questions live. Gather your questions now. You know, you'll be able to ask Pastor Mother Day your questions. Send him your live text and um, together we will enjoy the grace of God upon him tonight. Um, watch this. I'll be right back. Dear line, our topic tonight is sex in marriage. Pastor, how, how, how relevant? Oh, oh, Tony from Germany, good evening. Good evening, Tony. Hello, good evening, man. Good evening. Yes, ma uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. I, I'm very, very happy to come across this program. Thank you. 
Because of her. I'm a very uh, uh, strong believer in the Lord. Okay. And very, very active in the church. Okay. Uh, I, there's something I don't understand so much. And in, uh, a, a strong believer that really, uh, let me say, minister in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, the times you, you, you every, everybody praying to, to get power or to pray or, or let me just say prayer and fasting, and uh, you, you, you want to, to, to get higher to, to do things, mm -hmm. maybe uh, other people are doing, mm -hmm. and then uh, you, you have a husband at home that maybe every two weeks or every week wants to have uh, something, and you keep saying, no, uh, I want to fast two, three weeks, and... Uh, uh, I don't want to be disturbed because I'm uh, concentrating on getting uh, power from God. Yeah. Yes. I, <laughs> I don't know if you get my question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, okay, Tony from Germany, we appreciate your call. Tony says she's a strong woman, a strong believer. Yes. She wants power from God. Yes. And um, she wants to just, you know, keep, go, keep going on and on and on, seeking power, praying and fasting. Yes. And mind, well, maybe allow the man once a week. What do you see to that? Yeah. The Bible says that you can only do that in the context of marriage. Once you're married, you don't just have your life to yourself you have to agree together for such a time of prayer. Not only that, if you go further down in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, oh. uh, the Bible talks about, but he who is married cares about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. And there's a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord, mm -hmm. that she may be only both in body and in spirit. Yeah. But she who is married cares about the things of the world, how she will please her, her husband. husband. Mm. So once you get into the context of marriage. Now that doesn't stop your spiritual life, but now it needs to be worked out in consent, in agreement with each other. That's why mm. as husband and wife, they become one. You don't do things individually uh, so much to speak, or you just can't say, I want to just only be praying. That mm. doesn't happen. That's why the Bible says it's better for you to just stay unmarried. If you know you want, oh, this is it, Tony. <laughs> Pastor says, if you know you really want to see God, you want but power. That's, but that's too late now. She's married. He said, because Apostle Paul said, if you're married, stay. Pastor said the best thing is to stay unmarried so that you can seek God and receive power as much as you can. But if you're married, you just have to put your husband into consideration. Now, now, now the fact that you're married does not mean you, you are, you're going to be less spiritual. It doesn't affect spirituality. It doesn't affect your spirituality. Sex. Good evening, William. Sorry about that. Good evening. Thanks for calling. Yeah, hello. Good evening. Uh, yeah. I wanted to find that those culture house a part to play in sex, whether it's a Christian or not. Does culture have any part to play in sex? Does what? Um, culture. Culture has a part to play in sex? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for your question, yeah. Williams. We yeah. appreciate your call, sir. Now, one thing you have to appreciate that, number one, sex is a design from God. It is not a cultural thing. Uh, and if you want to play by the culture of the world, then you're going to run into a lot of problems. Mm. However, that is why Jesus came. Revelation chapter 5, uh, verse 9. Uh, I'll read the B part. Out of every tribe, every tongue, every people, every nation, that means every culture. Every culture. He has redeemed us unto himself as kings and priests. So mm. your cultural background, your culture should not have any anything part to, to do. Play rather than you get uh, colonized into the culture of heaven. Really? And you will actually run sex in the right context of, of what God intended it to be. Mm, so sex has got nothing to do with culture. With culture. So if you play your culture, there's going to be a lot of, because your culture will be clashing. So if you mm. meet somebody else, but you need to take everything. That's why you, the person that wants to actually use uh, the tool of God must actually belong to God belong first. Belong to God first, yeah. yeah. That's why yeah. there's a lot of abuse in our world. Okay, no culture in sex and um, no spirituality in sex. You want to be too spiritual? You want to seek God in fasting and prayer 365 or 66 days a year? Stay unmarried. That's the message tonight. What does sex mean to a woman, sir? Because we mm. tend to believe, like you said, a man is the, is the sex engine. A mm -hmm. man is the one that desires sex and you know, wants, wants to go for sex as much as possible. Does sex have any meaning to a woman? Sex has meaning to a woman in the context of what I said before, in the context of affection. Mm -hmm. A woman will enjoy sex with her husband, union with her husband, 
in the place where there's affection, where there's okay. care okay. Uh, for the woman. All right, David from Northampton, good evening. Thanks for calling. Oh, good evening. Yeah, thanks for calling. Hello. Go on, please. Okay, uh, the question I've got is that I would like the pastor... Hello? Hello, speak on, please. I would like the pastor to talk about uh, premarital sex. Premarital sex? Yeah. Okay. Thank what's you, David. Plan, yeah, what's the plan of God about it? Okay. Okay, yeah. thank you, David. Pastor, what's the plan of God about premarital sex? The plan of God regarding premarital sex is very clear in scriptures. The Bible says he doesn't want premarital sex. The, mm. the Word of God says in the book of Ephesians, if I have it right here, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. But fornication, that means married, uh, sex outside marriage, mm -hmm. and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named mm -hmm. among you as is fitting for sins. Mm -hmm. Neither filthiness or foolish talking and all the lots. Mm -hmm. Is that because all these, all these kind of people would not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm. Sex is only allowed in the context of marriage. That means it's only for married people. Simple mm. as that. Mm. And the other area, God says he will judge it. Whoa. Sex it's, it's okay should now. not be outside marriage. That's right. So there is nothing like premarital sex. It is not scriptural. And it does cause people a lot of pain sometimes as well because it mm. can result in things that you never planned for. It can, sex after, outside marriage can That's result true. in things that you never planned for. You never planned for, yes. like all sorts of sexually transmitted the disease, disease. Unwanted pregnancy. Unwanted pregnancy. You know, disappointments. And, because, you see, when you become one with somebody, and suddenly the person turns away, away from you. Oh, it's hot. It's right. like a part of you is gone, and that's exactly uh, what happens. Uh, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, we were looking at what sex means to a woman before David yes. called in. And I said, you know, it's, 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 an exp it's the place the woman gets to partake of the husband's uh, body, mm -hmm. covenant to the woman. It expresses your commitment as well to the woman. So sex is as important to a woman yes. as it is important to a man. Yes, because if you deny the woman, then you, it's difficult for you now to tell the woman that you're committed to her because she might think you're giving what belongs to her to someone to else. someone else. So it's a place you express commitment, but it doesn't mean commitment. It's a place you express love, but it doesn't mean love. It's a place mm. you express it. So the way you now actually enjoy sex uh, it now is what features the way you actually relate with the person as well. Okay. Because sex is not just um, just an activity that you just do for the sake of for the sake it. of doing it. Thank you. Good evening, Pastor Olu. Hello. Hello. Good evening, sir. Thanks for calling. Good evening, it's Pastor Olu. I come from Watford. Oh, the Lord bless you, sir. Good evening, ma. Good evening, sir. Good, Good evening, evening, sir. Good evening. I just want to. Um, Ask uh, the man of God a question. Go on, okay. So that we will be able to uh, try and enlighten us. Okay. Yes. Um, what is the difference between making love and sex in marriage? Oh, <laughs> that's a serious one. Okay. <laughs> what is the difference between making love and sex in marriage? Thank yes. you, Pastor. We appreciate Thank you, your call. Yes. Sir. Now, it is just a term. It's just a, an expression of word. In the Bible, there's no such thing as making love. <laughs> However, sex is, the, is, uh, is what you use in expressing your love to your spouse. Mm. Do you get the point? Mm. So people call it making love. Now, making love can only be in the context of a husband and wife. Mm. So if you're not married, you're not making love. Whoa. You are actually uh, engaged in an Ill illegal, illegal activity. activity. So, it's not, so the only place you make love is in, is in sex in a marriage context where you express your love towards your wife or your spouse. Mm. So making love is a term that uh, men uh, in the context of our world has created, but the Bible calls it a joining together, a coming together, a union between, between uh, husband. husband and wife. Okay. All right, sir. Uh, there are thousands of men out there tonight whose sex life is very, very, very dry, so to speak. Yeah. Their partners are I don't know, asking for grace for them to be able to meet up, mm. you know. Uh, what are the things that can affect a man's sex life? <clears throat> okay. Now, when that's a very general question. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we could look at it from the point that some people are saying maybe their husbands are not satisfying them enough mm -hmm. in bed and things like that. Mm -hmm. 
Now, that is a question I get all the time, all over the world, where I go and teach on, on marriage. On marriage, yeah. And sometimes, you know, it's not so much about satisfying uh, your spouse in bed. Mm -hmm. Because when you see such a cry sometimes, I see it as, as an evidence of certain emptiness in the, in the marriage or in the person. Because sex is not what satisfies you. Mm. Your satisfaction in marriage is not about sex. That means that person has an emptiness that they're trying to deal with. And it could be from certain uh, dysfunctional upbring upbringing. Some mm. people have, might have been engaged with sexual activity at a very young age, outside okay. of marriage. Okay. Now they bring some of those expectations into marriage. Mm -hmm. That is not the only, the scriptural context of which marriage uh, of, of which sex is being designed for uh -huh, marriage. Uh -huh. So when people say that my partner is not satisfying me in bed and things like that, it's, it's an evidence of another emptiness. It's another thing that's actually wrong. It's not just the sex. Uh -huh. Because even if that man does even more, they probably still comply. Uh -huh. So there are different contexts on which you can look at it. Uh -huh. Now the other way you can look at it is it maybe if the man is not even um, trying to get involved with sexual activity. Oh, are you saying it's, it's not relevant whether the man satisfies his wife in bed or not? Sex is not about satis satisfying you because sometimes people want to win a trophy. That's what they're talking about. So when you ask, what do you mean by satisfying me? Uh, then some people will tell you it's about, oh, he only goes about five minutes and that's it. And mm -hmm. I beg your pardon. It's not about the time. It's not about how long. It's not about how but, well but, it goes. But sex is towards a main goal, isn't it? Sex is not towards a main goal. You see, those are the things that... Life has taught us uh, to, 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 to have sex in certain context. One minute, sir. Yes. Good evening, Williams. Yes, good evening. Yeah, yes, thanks sorry, for calling. I called yeah. earlier okay. regarding the question of culture and, and sex. Okay. Um, okay. The man of God, you know, gave his answer. Okay. But, you know, is it true that you can just say that culture has nothing to do with sex, which obviously is a topic for today? I mean, obviously we've seen in real life, how your culture that you come from does affect the way you, you, you approach sex, the way you make love to your wife or your husband because of the way you've been brought up. So I, practically, and I think I would like to have more clarity as a Christian, obviously there are people who get into mixed relationships and you experience different approaches. Okay. You know, that doesn't take away anything from the word love or the affection of love. Okay. But the way you're brought up, whether mm. in a Christian home, you know, to say, mm. does affect the way you approach. Maybe you might find out a particular person, due to where he grows up, mm. might prefer certain things mm. because of his culture. Doesn't make them less Christians or non Christians. Oh. So I do believe that I would like to have a bit more explanation, okay. not just a vague one regarding, okay, the Bible says this. All right. All but right, practically, you know, people are affected by this because okay. not because just of their you're not a Christian, I'm a Christian. Okay. Because okay. I grew up from this home, you grew up from this home. The, educa the education I had is this, the education mm -hmm. you had is this. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we're not Christians. Okay. So okay. I'd like to have a bit more. All right, Williams, okay. thanks um, for calling. Thanks for mind. calling. Pastor? Now, Williams, uh, why that question is, uh, is so simple to, uh, to answer is because, number one, the man and the woman that God gave sex to, mm -hmm where the Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 man and woman. Mm -hmm. Every other thing after Genesis chapter 3 was a dysfunction. Now our culture set in from there. Different things that we picked up after the fall of man. Mm -hmm. But where sex started, there was no culture of any tribe of any man. So culture, the only culture that was available in the garden mm -hmm. was the culture of heaven. Mm -hmm. That is why Jesus came to bring us back, to pull us out. That's why I read that scripture, Revelation chapter 5. Mm -hmm. To bring us out of all our tribes. So you must be delivered from your culture. You can't go into marriage with your culture because the marriage, marriage institution is not our culture. The marriage institution is an institution of God. Mm -hmm. Sex is not from our culture. Sex is originated from God. Mm -hmm. That is why you can't walk it by the cultures of our world. That is why Jesus came to pull us out of where? Our tribes, our tongues, our cultures, our peoples, the way we've always grown, back onto himself. Mm -hmm. That is why there's a lot of errors in a lot of things that the Bible has put in place mm -hmm. because we try to walk it by our own culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The things of God doesn't work by our own culture or else it dysfunctions. Mm -hmm. That's why some people believe that sex with about five women is acceptable. 
That's because people, if they are culture to marry yes. as many wives as possible. Now there's other dysfunctional cu cultures around the world as well, whereby sex is about you know the man or about the woman. It's about dominion. It's about dominating the other person. Those are cultures mm -hmm. that abuse the institution. But itself. the fact is, it it does affect sex. What yes. we're saying tonight is we should get out yes. of the cultural so zone. I, I can discuss your culture because your culture. Uh, has got nothing to do with the institution of marriage, one, and two, uh, the tool of sex. Because mm -hmm. sex is not supposed to operate in our cultures, even though we have dragged it there. Mm -hmm. Now, that's our own thing to deal with. Okay. But to, to get the, 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 the results of God, okay. you will need to first be out of be that out of and that. come into the context of the world. All right, all right, all right, Pastor. Our time is yes. fast going tonight. Yeah, we were talking about partners satisfying each other. Yes. And you said there is nothing like satisfaction in sex. But we, we all know that when a man wants to have sex, he wants to climax. Yeah. A woman wants to have the same feeling. So if it's about the man and the woman is left out, are you saying it doesn't it, it's matter? It's not about the man or the woman. It's about expressing love. Now, what is love? Love is sharing yourself with the other person. Mm -hmm. So either the man... But is it's a journey that has, that has a hand result. Mm, I don't know if the Bible said that or not. The Bible never said anything about that. But, but that's, that's the reality, Pastor. No, that's not the reality. That's the reality that men have put in place. That's so are you saying, are you saying <laughs> sex is not meant to have, to get to the, to the, to, to the peak where you... You see, where all this dysfunction comes from is because people are more about the thing called sex rather about the intent of God which is behind the whole picture. And that is why our focus must be on God first so that whatever you do with your spouse is enjoyable, you experience the best of it as God wants you to experience the best of it. Oh, okay, okay. Be, be, before, we go, before, before we go tonight, on this particular one, now that you're saying yes. sex is not really meant to be, to be, to have, you know, we, we, we're not meant to have the focus of, oh, the man wants to climax, the woman wants to enjoy it's the It's not feeling. about the trophy. The but, sex, but is, sex is, 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 is that trophy thing? No, sex is not about the trophy. But, but, but climaxing no. or enjoying... <laughs> If, 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 if sex is about the trophy or the climaxing, then you find that the people, once they don't get, feel the satisfaction in the place, they go another place. But it should, it, it, that satisfaction is relevant, isn't it? There's Good evening, Joy from Germany. <laughs> Hello, Joy. Hello, good evening. Th thanks for calling. Yeah, good evening. My question is in second, uh, first Corinthians 7, okay. verse uh, 10. Okay. So, like, a uh, wife must not separate from her husband. Mm -hmm. So, I want to know even, uh, maybe the man must not also divorce uh, his wife. Mm -hmm. For example, if uh, the woman, the problem is going on and the woman is decided maybe abuse to separate, is it, um, and maybe they both are not married officially, okay. would the man to give her the divorce uh, uh, certificate? Because we are not officially married, married initially. Okay. and even at home, maybe in Africa, married. So how would the woman go about it? All right, all right, all right, all right, sir. Yeah, the, the she's talking about divorce. They they weren't okay. legally married initially, and now divorce has to come in. How should a woman ma manage that? Now she says something about maybe they married traditionally. Yeah, they married traditionally. They still married. The fact that they didn't go to church or they didn't go. To the to the court oh, doesn't mean that if you, if you're married traditionally, whether we traditional marriage is still acceptable, like the introduction. Yeah. And it's still a marriage. Introduction <coughs> is still marriage. It, well, the, the, they've been living together. From what I get from her, is that they've been living together. They probably have children and all that as well. Oh my now God. the Bible says, look, a wife is not to depart from her own husband, or if they are together, let them stay together. Now, she needs to give us more context of how this is what is really happening here. Well, you wow, know, wow. Because there's been a union in a way. There's been a union, union in, in a, a way. way. Now, okay, let me, let me explain this to you. Uh, and this is not totally automatic. We've got one minute to go. One minute to go. Okay. I told you the last time that every woman comes sealed. Mm -hmm. It's called what they call hymen. Hymen mm -hmm. is a seal over a woman's a, a female organ. Mm -hmm. Now, I found another word, hymenil. Hymenil mm -hmm. is when you break... It's, Actually, mean, it actually means marriage. Mm -hmm. and that, oh, it course, that actually means marriage. That so once you break that Once island, if a man disvergings a woman, you are automatically married to her. Now, uh, now, the context whereby that doesn't really work, and that's why the blood of Jesus 
to remove me in. out of that kind of conversation. Oh my word, our time is gone tonight. It, it, it seems we shouldn't, it looks like we shouldn't go. I'm bringing Pastor Mother Day back your way, especially on this issue of oh uh, sex is not meant to us. A uh, hand result. Ah, we really have to trash that out no. on a serious. A lot of people are trying to climax it, and that pressure actually did bars them. But she is, it's part of. So it's... you put pressure on each other while we're supposed to enjoy each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pastor. <laughs> we'll bring you Pastor one of them back on sex in marriage. Should should we look forward to climaxing in marriage, man, oh woman? God. Should it just be? Well, it will come back and give you more explanation. <laughs> Thou shall prosper. Is a book you want to lay your hands on. Ten Commandments of Money Making, of Making Money. Please get in touch with us and you get your copy and it will be a blessing to you. Uh, next week, by the grace of God, there is this biggest event, biggest Christian event in the UK that is coming up in the month of September in Wembley Stadium. And by the grace of God, next week, I'm going to have live with me in the studio, the covenant, the visionary. I mean, of that program, of that event. It will be here live with us and tell us more about what we should expect, you know, in September at Wembley Stadium. And please get in touch with Pastor G.T. David Mode. His, his, his number is on the screen. His website is there. Email is there. Call on my mobile as well. We can get him to speak to you. Till I see you, same time, same station next week. Please, all your text messages will be dealt with when next we have him on the show. Um, to all production crew, I appreciate and love you. God bless you. Pastor, thanks for coming on this show tonight. We're so bringing much. you back to finish up with what you started. Okay. God bless you. Good night. Enjoy sex in marriage. Bye. Bye.